evening everybody this is dr hack we're going to continue on with our end games today and we're going to place another stepping stone onto the map now when i say stepping stones let me just illustrate that for a minute because i think i described it last time as eating your vegetables and that just doesn't do it for me i got to do better so let's try so i've asked a you know a very helpful ai to draw us a picture to help illustrate uh, what the end game is in chess and it drew this river and this is actually really good. Okay uh, I'll, I'll leave a hat out for tips. It, it, it accepts cookies and caches, you know as tips so um, Imagine this river was your chess game and let's start, you know on this side and This is then where the game begins Okay, and your opening would be like this first stone right here so you can reach with your opening moves, with what you've got memorized, just barely into the chess game, just enough to, enough to scratch the surface. You can't jump across yet, it's still too far. But if you're lucky, your very next step will hit a rock out of your knowledge. And if you're unlucky, you're getting all wet because you hit a trap, right? But that means that the other side of the river, this stuff over here, is our end game. And every time we learn something about the end game, we build a little tiny stone in that river that we can step on once we get there, right? And hopefully we eventually connect those stepping stones to the middle of the game here, which is this giant green island in the middle full of tall grass with lots of scary alligators and snakes and things that you can't see because it's all cloudy. Nobody really understands the middle of the game fully, which is why the game's still fun. Um, and uh, if we were to work our way through the opening and get better at our opening, maybe we could add another stepping stone, maybe two, right? Maybe eventually, once we master the game, we can connect these two things. We can learn enough about the opening to get in firmly into the middle of the game. And we can learn about enough about the end of the game so that when we exit the middle of the game, we have a clear path to the other side to win the game. That's the hope. The problem that we always face as chess players is all of that. <laughs> that's the stuff that's so gray that it's very hard to connect all of that we try to learn tactics on how to avoid the snakes and the crocodiles we try to learn positional things how to position ourselves so they don't bite us but man oh man that's a rough patch and it looks so nice you know okay hopefully that helps you understand what we're doing today we are building our way back let's get into it right so as we build these stepping stones for you back towards the middle of the game what we're really going to do is we're just going to add a piece at a time add one pawn add two pawns maybe three pawns at a time and then just learn everything we can about those positions so that if we ever reach them or something like them we'll have a clear path to the end of the game okay and for now <clears throat> let's try to understand what happens if we put a single pawn on the board and remember from the last video one of these kings is always more powerful than the other and it depends on which king can move forward as to which one is the more powerful so if it's black's turn to move um, and he moves let's say this way the white king has the ability to move forward a row through, through row six and therefore he is the more powerful king he can force his way around the board or if he chooses to he can stop black from moving around the board by just sitting in front of him and then black wouldn't be able to push through the sixth row. So <clears throat> one king always has the power, right? If it were white's turn to move first, then black would have the power. And he could choose to either move forward, which is kind of a bad idea, or he could choose to block white from moving forward, which is a really good idea, okay? But he has the choice of whether he tries to make progress or whether he just stops the other king from making progress. He's the powerful king. Okay, good recap, huh? Now. How do we get this pawn from where it is to here? And um, especially with this guy sitting in the way, he's annoying. He's a big, big immovable object, right? Well, <clears throat> it really, really helps if our king stays in front of our pawn. As a matter of fact, if we go beside our pawn or behind our pawn, then the, if this player knows what he's doing, he'll always be able to stop you and make the game into a tie. And that's unfortunate that this is such a walking on such a knife's edge when we have the only piece left, right? So let's let's make sure we stay in front of the pawn. Now we can do that by moving this away, right? In this case, because the king went that way. And look at what we're doing now. We're touching three squares in front of the pawn. 
And if the pawn were to move onto any of those squares, it would not be capturable by the black king because we're defending it, right? He can't capture and put himself into danger. So we could technically march the pawn all the way up to here without it getting into any danger at all. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, but we'd like to get it to here. So actually, we'd like to take one more row of squares with our king, and we'd like our king to sit here or here. That way the pawn can just kind of march all the way. How do we do that? Oh, well, we remember same color, same file. Hmm. And now his king has to move left or right to get out of our way. And whichever way he goes, we can now take the next row. And now our king is touching the last three squares on the row, and the pawn can march all the way to the end. He'll be defended from here onward with our king. Okay, so we can just start him coming up. Here we go. And there's really nothing the black king can do. Except cower in fear. Ugh. Um, okay, so so we got that. Okay, so the king would like to be in front of the pawn. What happens if the king gets stuck behind the pawn? Like, what happens if it's if it's white's turn here, and black stops him from moving forward? Black is the king that has the, the position of power here, and the pawn has to move. Well, now the king is beside the pawn, and I already said, if the king gets beside the pawn, then there's always a way for this guy to make a draw if he knows what he's doing. Well, let's see what that is. And, uh, and as the pawn moves again, notice we can't bring our king back in front of it again. So it has to move. Or we have to go behind it, either way. If this king knows how to retain that position of power, if he knows that when white's king moves here, he has to be able to come to that square, then he'll move straight back. And if he does that, and he steps in front of us, watch how this game ends. Check. The king gets in front of the pawn. And now we either move away from the pawn and let him take it, or we move behind the pawn, and this king has no legal moves and he's not in check. That's a stalemate. That means the game's a tie. Hmm. And that happens every time our king gets behind our pawn or beside our pawn. Mm-hmm. So we don't want that to happen, which gives us a, no a rule now. We have our first stepping stone. If... Our king reaches a square that's two squares in front of our pawn and one to either side. Then it doesn't matter whose turn it is, white can always win the game. He always has the opportunity because if it's his turn and he's getting stopped, he can change whose turn it is and now he's the king in the position of power. The king, this king has to get out of his way and he can move forward again. So it doesn't matter whose turn it is if your king is resting two squares in front of the pawn. So that means if you're looking at an end game and you've got three pawns left and you trade two of them off the board, all you have to do is calculate to this position where your king is sitting on any one of these three squares. And we already know now that there is a way to win and then we just have to work it out. We've got our stepping stone. And that's what this is all about. In order to practice this, you need to go and put this on a computer engine or on a friend engine, right? And you need to play it over and over again until you understand all the different nuances of one single pawn trying to make a queen. Put the kings all over the board. Try to reach these squares in front of the pawn. And once you do, make sure you know how to win the game. I do hope this helps you. We're going to make this a lot more complicated. We're going to add another, some more pawns the next time around. Look forward to seeing you guys then. Take care now. Bye.